Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us talk about complementary submodules. Complementary submodules. So, this is related to the notion of direct sums that we talked about before. So, uh, let M be an R module. Let M1 be a submodule. Now, if uh, M2, so if there exists a submodule M2 of M such that M is the internal direct sum or the direct sum of m1 and m2 then we say uh, that m m1 has a complementary subspace so we say m1 has a complementary subspace or a submodule has a complementary submodule okay and in this case, the, the complementary submodule is, is M2. So, we say M2 is a complement of M1 and uh, we say further that M2 is a complementary submodule of M1. Okay. Now, the, the point here is that uh, you may not in general have complements. Given an M1, there may not exist an M2 that is something that happens and uh, the other important thing is even if it does have a complement, the complement need not be unique. There are often many different uh, submodules, uh, each of which serves as a complement to the, to the given module. Okay? So, let us just look at some, some examples here. Uh, the most uh, familiar one is that of subspaces or vector spaces. So, this is the case when R is a field K and so M1 and M, so let us say M is a M is a K vector space, in other words it is a module over the ring R equals K and M1 is a subspace. Okay, so, I am given all this. So, the question now is does M1 have a complement? Okay, does it is there a complementary submodule of M uh, for M1? Does M1 have a complement? Okay, and the answer in this case of vector spaces or in the case when R is a field, the answer is always yes. Okay, so M1 uh, always has a complement. So claim is that I can manufacture a complement for M1. M1 has a complement. So, this is you know complementary submodule really so, as a complementary submodule. Why? Well, here is how we usually do this in vector spaces, it is probably uh, familiar to you. So, let me just draw a, a sort of a schematic diagram. So, let us say my vector space is, so as an example, suppose my ring was, my field was uh, the field of real numbers and suppose my vector space was m equals r2. Okay. And suppose I give you m1 to be let us say the x axis. So, let us say this space here is m 1 okay. and what I need to do is to is to find a complement to m 1. Okay. Now, as you can see there are in fact tons of different complements. Of course, I could take the y axis as a here is one possible complement, but in fact there are many others. I could take any line uh, other than the x axis. Each line other than the x axis will serve as a complement. So, these are all different choices of m 2. 
I can take this to be M2 or I can take this to be M2 or I can take this to be M2 and so on. Okay, So, I have many choices here and what is it that we are really doing? Uh, well, what we are doing in this picture can be done in general. So, how do we find a complement? Uh, well, here is the construction. Let us just do this via basis for this vector space. Okay, So, how do we manufacture a complement? Choose a basis. Let us call it uh, Vi's. So, at this at this point, I am just allowing everything to be maybe even infinite dimensional, I do not care. So, choose a basis V i of m 1 okay. and the key point here is that this basis can always be extended. So, and extend this to a basis. Okay, Let us call this. So, I already have some basis vectors to that I, I add a few more. Let's call it vi primes, uh, i belonging to some other indexing set j. Okay, so I, I can given a basis uh, for a subspace or given in general a linearly independent set in a vector space, you know that you can extend it to a basis. You can add on some additional vectors so that the whole set is a basis of the ambient vector space. Okay, now this is a very very non obvious and uh, uh, important property that vector spaces have which general modules do not. Okay. So, let us do this you can extend this to a basis and now what does that uh, get you? Now, what we can do is we can use this extended basis to define the complementary subspace. So, I define m 2 to just be the span. Okay. So, this is span over k, k span of the remaining basis vectors v i primes i and j. Okay. Now, once you do this, so like we did in this in this figure, observe that the ambient vector space is nothing but m1 direction m2. Okay. Why? Well, again, I will leave this for you to check, but you can already see why this must be true because if I give an arbitrary element m in m, I first write it as a linear combination of these basis elements. Some terms involve vi's, the other terms could involve the vi primes. So, the portion which is a linear combination of the vi's I call it as m 1, the portion which is a linear combination of the vi primes I call it m 2. Okay, And now use this to show that this decomposition is unique and so on. Okay, So, uh, if you are in the context of vector spaces then any sub module of my module m or rather any subspace therefore, can uh, you can always manufacture a complementary sub module for it. Okay. Now, this fails uh, in general if we are talking about uh, arbitrary rings. So, this is not true in general and let us see an example where this fails. Okay. So, for this we will just take R to be the ring k x, the ring of polynomials in one variable x and if you remember what this what modules over this ring are given by uh, they are just pairs v comma t where v is a vector space and t is a linear operator on v okay this is really how any module over this ring can be obtained so in our case let me you know take v to be something very simple let me take v to be the vector space k2 okay so it's i think of it as all column vectors all 2 cross 2 column vectors a b a and b coming from k so, this is my vector space and I need to also specify a linear operator on this vector space and I will just give you the matrix of this linear operator. So, this is 0 1 0 0. So, recall we have looked at this example once before when we talked about quotient modules and so on. So, T is just this, this operator. Now, what does this mean again to recall how pairs V comma T correspond to modules over K x. Uh, this the translation is the following when I take a scalar from my field. So, if I take alpha scalar from my field and I make it act upon an element of v, it just acts as usual. It just multiplies, you know this is the this is the definition of scalar multiplication in, in k 2, right. I just multiply alpha on both components. So, this for all alpha coming from k. Okay, so, I think of alpha as, as the constant polynomials which is uh, you know they only have a constant term no x or x square and so on. Next I tell you what x does, how does x act? 
well x acting on an element of this vector space is given by the action of t on that element okay so t really performs the role of x and uh, in this special case what is t on ab i just need to multiply this 0 1 0 0 on ab so that's just b comma 0 so this is how x acts x acting on ab gives me b comma 0 and in this particular case it's easy to check if i take x square for example so x square is supposed to be t square right i, I perform t twice but if you take this particular matrix and square it, it just gives you the zero matrix so in fact this is just going to be the zero vector so x square well in fact all higher powers of x x cubed uh, x power 4 and so on all of them act as zero okay so in some sense all the information is only contained in in these first two um, actions that of alphas that's constant polynomials and the polynomial x okay so that's my module so what have i done for you i have defined for you a module so v in this case is a module over r okay v is an r module why are these definitions okay now i claim that in this context i can find an example of a submodule which does not admit a complement okay so next task is to try and understand what submodules of v look like and remember this again is something that we have addressed before if i need to find submodule so this is all over the ring kx so the kx submodules of v are the same as t invariant subspaces of v okay so look back again on on the lecture on submodules where we talked about what submodules of modules over kx look like these are just t invariant subspaces okay now what is a t invariant subspace in this particular example that's all we are we are down to so let's try and understand what are the t invariant subspaces so suppose so let me work on the, the right hand side so let me try and look at this so let m subset of k2 be a t invariant subspace maybe you shouldn't call it m let's use some vector space notation let me call it w maybe let w subset of k2 be a t invariant subspace of k2 okay so what does that mean so let me pick an element in w so uh, suppose i take the vector a b belonging to w now saying that w is t invariant means that when i act t on a b the answer is again in w okay now what does this mean in this case recall t does this special thing it just sends a b to b comma 0 so what i conclude is that b comma 0 must be in w okay now if b is not 0 if b is not 0 then this in fact tells me that you know i can divide by b i can conclude that the vector 1 comma 0 is in w okay so that seems to be some conclusion we can draw that if suppose my uh, invariant subspace has a vector a b in which this uh, element b is not 0 then i can conclude that the the vector 1 0 itself belongs to w okay so what does this mean let us just take uh, well this this sort of already tells us gives us a candidate for a subspace so let us look at the following uh, candidate so let us define a subspace so let me call it uh, maybe p it is just a span of 1 0 okay in other words it is all vectors of the form a comma 0 a range is okay Okay, so I claim that P is in fact a uh, P is an invariant subspace. So I claim that P is a T invariant subspace of is a T invariant subspace of K2. Okay, why is that? Well, because um, proof if I just take you know take any element A0. 
in p in fact you see that what you get is just 0 0 okay because it, it b is 0 in this case so t of a 0 is just 0 0 so of course that belongs to the subspace p okay so this is t invariant for very obvious reasons that it maps every element there to 0 okay so this is this is sort of trivial but i claim more in fact that this is the only t invariant subspace of k2 other than the two trivial possibilities which is 0 and the whole okay so claim the stronger claim in fact uh, the 0 subspace the sort of one dimensional subspace p and the two dimensional subspace k2 are the only t invariant subspaces of k2 okay so i claim that there are only these three t invariant subspaces. So, let us prove that. So, we have just shown that p is t invariant. These other two guys are of course t invariant. I claim there cannot be any others. Okay. Why not? Well, that is what we just tried to show here. Suppose w is a t invariant subspace of k2. Okay. So, let us pick such a guy. What do we conclude? If suppose I have a vector uh, in w in which b is not 0 then I conclude that 1 0 belongs to W. Okay? So, recall that is what this argument showed. So, let us now uh, use that in this proof. So, I, I claim that these are the only T invariant subspaces. So, maybe let us argue by contradiction. If not, there exists a T invariant subspace W which is not one of these three. W, which is not equal to 0, which is not equal to this space P, which is not equal to K2. Right? Now, what does that mean? Uh, okay. So, what does that mean? In particular, it says that W is not 0 dimensional, W is not 2 dimensional. So, this tells you that W is not a 0 dimensional space, W is not the whole thing. So, W can only be some 1 dimensional space. right? So, that is what we have concluded so far. It is a one dimensional subspace, but further it is not equal to this particular special one dimensional subspace P. It is some other one dimensional space. Okay? So, W is one dimensional. So, all this is now thought of as vector spaces over K. So, we know for sure it is one dimensional and it is not this particular one dimensional guy P. Now, what is P? If you remember, P is just everything in the form A comma 0. Okay, and w is not this one dimensional space, which means that I can surely find a vector a b in w such that b is not 0. Right? Why can I do that? Because w is not equal to p. Right? If it if it is not p, then at least one vector in w must have a component, the second component here, which is not 0. Okay? So, there is a vector in W for which its second component B is not 0, but now we just use the argument that we used right here, the previous uh, page, which said that if B is not 0, then I conclude that 1 comma 0 is in W. Okay, so, let us conclude that this means that 1 comma 0 is in W, belongs to W. Okay, but observe what does that mean? 1 comma 0 is exactly the span of 1 comma 0 is exactly p. Right? p is the span of 1 comma 0. Okay, so if 1 comma 0 is in w, then the span of 1 comma 0 is a subset of w. Right? So I conclude that p must in fact be a subspace of w, but that is not quite possible because this guy is also one dimensional and this guy is also one dimensional. Okay? So both are one dimensional and I conclude one of them is a subspace of the other, then that the only possibility is that they are equal. Okay, but recall that is a contradiction because we started out under the assumption that uh, P and W are not equal to each other. Okay? So, uh, look back again on this proof. The one basic observation is this, this thing that we just made that if you can find a vector in W whose second component is not 0, you can conclude that 1 comma 0 itself is in W. Okay, now, uh, what does that get us? Let us go back to this, this claim here. So, this claim tells us something, something very, very interesting. It says 
that there are only three subspaces which are t invariant okay and recall t invariant subspaces are the same as kx submodules now if these are the only three t invariant subspaces then let me do the following let me take my my submodule m1 to be p itself here so now let's do the following let's take so consider m1 to be p so this is definitely a kx submodule of k2 okay because it's t invariant but observe this does not have a complementary subspace okay why not well because there aren't any subspaces possible what are the only possible invariant guys you can either take p 0 or k2 right and well let's see what do you need for a complementary subspace at the very least you need that the intersection of that with p should be 0 right so i can't take p p can't be the complement of itself because the intersection is not 0 k2 can't be the complement of p the only possibility is 0 maybe because the intersection is 0 but p intersection 0 is 0 but p plus 0 is not the whole thing okay so p plus 0 would just give me p itself so observe that none of these three candidates can serve as a complementary subspace to m1 so observe that uh, there exists there does not exist a complementary subspace or a complementary submodule why because the only candidates so there are only three candidates p and the whole none of them satisfy the requirement to be m1 direction m2 okay so uh, complementary submodules don't always exist you you know vector spaces are uh, somewhat special in this regard okay so there are many other instances where they where they do exist as well but this is just to reinforce that what we are familiar with in the vector space context uh, one should be a little careful with with uh, trying to use those same sorts of reasoning in uh, the case of general rings okay Thank you.